So touching is very important in therapy. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, a tool that we have, which is a human tool. And it beats all other tools, because that is something you give of yourself as a therapist. If you fulfill a need, the person is not going to feel it. And you don't know when they're going to get back to it and be able to, you know, to come back to it. And you may have lost that opportunity for them to feel it. So the way the, 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 I can give you a simple equation that, that will help you. When the person is indeed on the brink of the feeling, I needed to be touched so much. There was never anybody there. But I needed to be touched that day. And, the, and you can see that they are here. They can't drop in, but they are not there in two. I need you to touch me. They're still talking about the fact that they needed to be touched so much. Then you can help them go in by just a very slight touch, which is more, it's not touching you at that point. It's more compassion. I'm there. Because that only will allow that person to go down. But when they are near the need, you do not touch them. If you feel they need again that little help, that they're on the cliff, and again, you feel that they need again that little thing to help them go deep here, you just, what Brenda said, you put your hand out. The, the, the when you can touch them is when they are in the state of suffering. That's when touching really helps. What is the definition of suffering in prime? Suffering. What is suffering? Oh, what is the definition is of suffering? Said? What is suffering in prime? The hurting before they actually slipped into the feeling. Exactly. Suffering is the state when we are fighting our defense system is fighting the feeling that's coming up. It's like we are, we are the recipient of the battle. The defense is trying to keep it down, and mm. the feeling is trying to come up. And we are like a battleground. We're in a state of suffering. As you know, the minute you drop into the feeling, you're not suffering anymore. You're feeling, but you're not suffering. It's like suddenly your system is one. It is engaged into an action of feeling what needed to be felt. It's not like fighting it, like you can't feel this, but I need to anymore. Huh. That's when you can touch. <coughs> that is in the state of suffering, because what it does, it brings the defense down. And therefore, the feeling can come up. That's what's important hmm. about this. But when a patient needs to be touched, needs to be feeling, needs to feel that it needs to be touched, if you touch them, you're going to keep them out of the feeling. You're going to take the feeling away. You touch them when there is suffering. And that is when we're trying to help the patient feel. That's case number one. We want the patient, we're helping the patient to feel that. Now, if they're feeling another feeling that has nothing to do with touching, again, they are in a state of suffering. They are hovering around the feeling. The defense keeps coming up. And you can see that they're not going to win that battle. Whatever you say may not work. And so touching may just be the, the, the thing that will allow the force of the defense to ease and to let the feeling come up. So sometimes that's what you have to do. Mm. But the safe way is just put your hand out and let them grab it or take it if they need it to, so that they can fall into the feeling. That is to help the patient feel. It's, that's going down feeling. Now, the other one is there is too much suffering or slash feeling, like it's too much feeling as well, which is what we just saw Joy go through. And we're not trying to help the feet down to the feeling. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to repress We're trying to help repress the feeling. Why can touching re help repress a feeling? It's 
It is, yeah. We used to sit 25 milligrams of thoroughs in, in the old days, but yes, it's like administering Prozac. Why is that? Why is it bringing the level of the pain down? Well, it gives you comfort. It gives you comfort. Somebody's there for you. Exactly. And since we know that touching was such a needed thing when we were children, when we were babies, it does bring you the feeling of being safe, the feeling of comfort, the feeling that there is somebody there, somebody cares, somebody is there for you, not mm. just there in the room, but someone is there for you. The therapist can be there in the room. That doesn't mean they're really there for you and that you know it. They could be thinking about something else. But when they touch you, they're there for you. There is a contact between you and them. And being there for you will therefore bring the level of the pain down. Um. Yeah. If I'm a male therapist, I have to be careful about grabbing a female patient. Yeah, you're right. All the in in inappropriate, you bet. That is a very big no-no. Uh, like, uh, you know, the, we, we read recently about a patient that the therapist was taking her in, in, uh, on his lap mm. because she wanted to be on her father's lap. Oh, what a great excuse for the therapist. They should not be therapists. Because obviously they're doing this out of their own need or out of their own sickness, because there is that also existing, and not to help the patient. Uh, you have to be careful. Sometimes the patient will ask you actually to touch them in places like in their breast or something like that because whatever, you know, the reason of the explanation. You just don't do it. You just don't do that. You can still, you know, give them the comfort or, or the dialectic that they need by touching them on their arm or, the, you know, their head. But you don't touch any, any part of their body that could look inappropriate or that would be inappropriate. It's just not done. So if they absolutely need it, then get a therapist that is the same sex so that there will be absolutely no confusion and uh, no... Um, so what I'm looking for, ambiguity, okay? So be careful about that. The other thing that you have to be careful about, by the way, is that when a patient is just crying, crying, crying deeply and your heart goes out to them and your tendency would be to embrace and take them in your, in your arms, is that okay? No, why? Because you're doing it for yourself. You're doing it for yourself, but what will it do for the patient? Take them out of this feeling. It will take them out of their feeling they will be suddenly with you instead of being inside themselves, which is what they need to do. And it's very, it can be very dangerous because since it's such a basic, deep need, if a, if a patient is going into the absolute strong need as a child to be touched, and while they're going into it, you give it to them, you're going to deprive them from feeling something that is so deep in them that you could really make them do damage. So when a patient is feeling that, that on that level, whatever it is, by the way, whether it's the need to be touched, to be loved, to be anything, and then you come and embrace them because, oh, poor, poor, you know, the poor child, look how she's suffering. Not only can you doing it for yourself and not for them, but what you're doing is can be creating a lot of damage because you take them out of the feeling, but the feeling is on its way up, don't forget. The channel is open. So now they can't resolve it. They can't go to the end. They can't beg for what they need. They can't go to the need. And going to the need, as we know, is the most important part that allows healing. Once you've gotten to the need, there's nothing more you can go to because that's the deepest part of you. And once you go there, that's when things start changing in a deep way for you.